Ice Academy of Montreal is the epicenter of the world's best ice dancers. Being able to train with your top competitors and all the top coaches makes the environment special. It's a very important year because the Olympics are in less than six months. That's why it's a competition, whoever does it best. Breathe when you want to scream. When it's on you to keep it down now. Change when all the changing is pain. When all the growing means breaking off your weakest parts. Hello. 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 Hello
and then we started skating like two years after that, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Qu'est-ce que tu fais après le Bauer? Tu pousses, tu, tu fais Bauer, pousse. Chassé, couru. We met Romain when we were about, I don't know, let's say 13, 14. Et chasse. Ah, OK, ouais. He's very demanding, but it's, it's very encouraging to know that your coach uh, knows that you can do better than what you think you can do. Ice dance is a sport of maturity because to create the quality, you, you, you need time. Est-ce que tu sens quand il enlève sa main, là? Gabi, est-ce que tu sens quand... Oui, euh, avant de replier les jambes. Quel est votre objectif? Every time we train, we like try to imagine what it would feel like to like win the Olympics and then like trying to like visualize it and try to get in the spirit and the mood. Gabriella Pakadakis, Guillaume Cizeron from France. It was our first Olympics, first event. We were on the ice and then we started our choreography and then my top opened. And then we both felt it at the moment and it was really just after like 10 seconds of choreography, not even. You can see that they've got a problem with the costume. You can see the costume is uh, her, her neck necklace has come apart. Because of that, we didn't have the performance that we worked so hard for. Not the reaction that the previous pair had. Gabby Gilm, they're masters of their craft. And you're looking at, in my opinion, is possibly the best of all time. 81-93, second place behind Virtue and Moyer from Canada. It's the first time I, I saw them crying on competition after. Their second gold medal of these Winter Olympic Games, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. I know that Pyeongchang didn't go the way that they wanted it to. They had their Pyeongchang moment. I hope they're proud of those Olympic silver medals. They need to go to Beijing and have different moments. But shaking those ghosts is not easy. They seem super motivated, and I feel they have a hunger they never had before. For them, it's gold or bust. And that is intense pressure. We're gonna do the garlic with the green beans, and what else was the garlic? I'm gonna cut this onion even though we don't need it because we're just gonna add onion because I like onion. We met Maddie and Evan a few times in the competition and talked with them and really loved them. Henry, is the meat good, Evan? Come here. Henry, come here. I think it all started with like either can you babysit my dog or do you guys want to come for dinner? Yeah. And then those dinners were just endless. You're gone the next three weekends? Yes. We're doing one competition the 10th of September in Italy. And you guys are going to Finland, right? Yep. Yeah. Are you guys able to watch them this Anytime. coming weekend? Anytime. Okay. I can take them tomorrow. <laughs> Not tomorrow. This week? <laughs> the rest of my life? <laughs> we didn't hang out with them as much until the pandemic hit and we all became closer and just realized like, like oh, we're gonna be friends for the rest of our lives. Like, of course. Of course. Friends, oh. please take one. Sparkling, oh. sparkling water or? Even it. better than that. Big champagne. Oh my gosh, so fancy, babe. Oh, this is the talking crazy. about, oh, what's it like to train with your competitors? It's like, but they're also our, our best friends. Oh. When we leave for a competition, they'll watch our dogs and they'll like watch them as though they're their own. <laughs> and it means a lot to us. No one drinking my White Claw. No, no, no peer pressure, no peer pressure. We have one can for mm. four. That's <laughs> about right. That's all we get at this point in the season.
Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahoe of the United States, both 27 years old in their first Olympics. I think what we were doing in 2018 was striving for an Olympic medal. The bronze medal could be on the line for them between them and their teammates. They need 127.54. That's going to be tough. And we had never been on the world podium, and we thought we deserved it, and we believed in ourselves, and it didn't happen. And so much of that games was kind of like riddled with my own disappointment. So this is our last season. We have decided to retire from competitive skating. I think we're in that process of like trying to banish all of the doubt. I want to win the next Olympics. If your partner is a little bit slow, you don't just go, well, the music's here. I don't care if you fall. <laughs> One or two times, yes, I agree. Consistently, every single time, there's a problem that has to be addressed, whether it's maybe the So are we already at every single time? I think people who skate by us sometimes are like, oh my god, they're fighting again. I'm trying to follow this pointless conversation. It's a, it's a change of track. It's a different track and very different feelings start coming from the wall. We've always had this certain chemistry, and we dated for about two and a half years. The thing that connects us as partners is the passion and the interest in skating. I think beyond that becomes the emotional connection that we have with each other and that kind of fire and fire. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You being attached to a certain You just brought it up. I wasn't complaining. I'm just saying. All the world titles and all the national titles that we've made are kind of a gift to ourselves to just be like, it doesn't matter. It, it, it will be the most amazing end to a career to have an Olympic medal around my neck. But I also want this to be the most amazing end to my career to experience the Olympics again with Zach. They're really starting to find their love of the sport again, which is a powerful thing for an Olympic athlete and a powerful thing for a nice dancer at the end because you realize the clock is ticking. So I think they're gonna be a team to watch this year. I think these two have the capability of really mixing things up. Opposite. Whoosh, and boom, there you go. I like that. We're in August now. This is kind of a crunch month. It's way too early in the season for everything to work, but you want it, like your ego wants it. If we came out, if we came out and we're touching, or whatever the turn is, would we be there to come back? I think that's stronger. You have that performance aspect of, holy cow, there is less time, there is less time, and then just trusting that you can pull some sort of wrap it out of your hat when the time is near. The head boom, that's one. I would try to detach from his shoulder and then engage. Exact amount, so nice, so nice. It is always the same feeling, which is, what are the judges gonna feel? Is people gonna like the program or, or not? One, two, three, three and four. four. It's crazy, the psychology of the sport. Everything has to be perfect every single time, and you're always putting on a show. I like it a lot. They need to have the X factor, the it factor, which is connection, which is uh, being able to tell a story and, and captivate an audience. And, and at the end of the day, at the Olympics, I believe it's about bringing people to their feet. You have to make them feel something. It is scary, because there's one spot, you have one chance. What's cool is that I believe there will be five or six really seasoned, mentally strong teams going for three medals and one title.